decide to start an original band, playing original music. I asked Johnny if he's ready to play. We share a love of playing and creating original music. Another guitar player with us, um, not Leo at first. And we start doing the arrangements for Mute the Whiskey and a bunch of other songs. Uh, get Anthony. Anthony says yes when I ask him. I haven't seen, didn't see Anthony for years and it was good to have him back playing with us. And then over time through a mutual friend, um, someone says you should reach out to Jamie. Reach out to Jamie, ask him to come into practice, send him a couple songs. Comes in, nails the songs, and uh, again, if music feels right when you're playing with the people, um, then you know it's the right thing to do. And Jamie stepped in. Um, it was almost like he was playing with us from day one, and it felt right. She Lost the Night, Jamie's song, uh, opening up the CD. Uh, it was Leo's suggestion to, uh, when we were thinking about sequencing the CD, that this should be the lead song, and uh, no one disagreed. It's a fun song to play. Um, came together pretty quick while we were rehearsing it. Um, Anthony kicked ass on the solo, and a lot of times when we're rehearsing, you usually get the feel of who should take the solo, and all along, felt like Anthony should have this hit kicked its ass. Uh, it actually started as a little just exercise with uh, learning the slap bass. I, I wanted to improve on that. and um, So that was a little thing I came up with. Uh, just a little you know. That is such a heavy song. You know, I know trying to come up with a guitar part for that. My, I felt my job was to just stay the hell out of the way and if I can anyway enhance the heaviness of it certainly then and then uh, in certain phrases I was getting a little adventurous and doing some really exaggerated slides I was excited to hear this song when the demo was sent around because I knew what kind of soaring synth line I could add to it and I did Jamie ruled When we first started getting together, I lived in a one bedroom condominium, which is tough for a drummer. So I went out and bought a set of Roland TD 25 KVs. Um, we bought a board, Studio Live 16.0.2, as well as the Studio One software. And we started recording our rehearsals and I would send mixes out to the band and we would learn the songs, come back, and um, polish them up. Um, we spent some time in studios uh, recording some of the songs, um, some people's houses. And then I eventually bought this house, um, and we have been recording down here in the basement. Um, and we finished the album in this basement. <clears throat> I think you guys are going to like it. It's a lot of energetic music. There's also a lot of slow music um, with great lyrics and great melodies. Um, I hope you guys like it. We certainly had a great time writing and recording it. So, why does a borderline atheist contribute two songs to a record for a band he's only kind of been in for a short amount of time and they both reference biblical shit well I'm crazy and these guys seem to like it so it's all we need is a little encouragement because the fragile ego and okay here we we're working on this dumb song singing about God and Jonah and Candy. Anthony at first said he, when we were doing vocals or when he heard one of the arrangements, he said, I hear Oz in this one part. So when you listen to the song, you hear the Oz in the, I think it's the chorus. Um, 
And then uh, what kind of genius, or what kind of mind, or genius mind comes up with an ending like the song. And that's why it's so much fun to have Leo in the band. This was a fun song to play. I don't know why Leo thinks playing Wayward Children with candy is a good idea, but he seems to think it is. Great rock tune. I mean, you know, right out of a garage or on a stadium, it's just got that 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 great feel, that driving feel. You just it just moves forward. Um, the lyrics, I love I love some of Leo's lyrics on this one. So uh, after playing in cover bands for several years, I was um, I was really intrigued when I I was contacted by a mutual friend that joined the Refugee Dogs, and um, after the first night, I came in and sat in with them after listening to some of Bill's songs and and, and uh, working out the parts. Um, pretty much knew right away that this was this was going to be a great place for me. Um, we have three songwriters in the band. And uh, that's excellent because it keeps us all on our toes. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, when Lennon and McCartney were working together, they, they, I think there was a little bit of one-upsmanship, and then Brian Wilson and Paul McCartney did the same thing. So imagine that with three, three songwriters in the band. That's a pretty amazing um, environment to be in. This is where it all starts. Um, with Meet the Whiskey and Lover's Moon in my pocket, decide to start an original band. I'm trying to do something distinctive, and, and it's so hard. I write stuff that I can't play then after I record it. This is one of Bill's songs. It's a great song. I made sounds come out of my keyboard by putting my fingers on the keys and moving them around, and it worked perfectly. I tell you, perfectly. This was my introduction to the band, uh, one of the first songs that Bill sent over for me to listen to to get a feel and see if I was interested. Heard it and was instantly interested because it's a superior song. Uh, um, there was there was a level of sophistication to it that also um, meshed up well with uh, the, I don't know, sort of an Americana rock feel. Um, Great vocals on that by Bill, fun to sing along with it, and I was able to add the harmony. The bass line that's on that was written primarily by uh, someone else, one of Bill's friends, before I came in, So, and it was really, really well done. I didn't see any reason to, to mess with the heart of it. I was able to build off of what was there, so um, he did a great job, and, and so I inherited that and, and built on it. Um, hell of a song. Thank God. Thank God for Bill. I'm glad he uh, invited me to join this band. And uh, the ability to just be creatively vomitous and fertile. Uh, it was like a welcome, open invitation. Join this band and yeah. And, wow. I had no idea. And thanks to Johnny D. That's how I know Bill because those two guys played together in uh, some band, I can't remember the name of it. Flash in the Pan, haven't been around very long. Only had a, like, it was a power trio. I played all original prog music. No, that's Rush, I'm talking about uh, Street Hassle. Um, Jamie, edit. Uh, yeah, so. I got to know Bill through Johnny D. It was just something I took a chance on, that he encouraged me to take that chance, and uh, here we are, a few years later. It's a lot of fun. Um, I thought it was probably worth to, it to introduce it to the dogs to see if this was something that we might want to record. And they liked it, so um, it was natural for that for them. Um, John's drums on this are particularly strong. Um, really, everybody everybody did a great job on this. In the morning, normal people, my wife, are asleep. I'm out here in the living with headphones and some passable digital guitar tone. They're trying to kill my guitar. <laughs> Jamie wrote this song. It's a straight-ahead rocker. Jamie rules. 
Jamie said one of the funniest things that he had a couple songs. And he uh, Lay in My Saddle Down was the first song he he sent along with another song, but when I heard Saddle, it blew me away. I said, We gotta do this. And it's just a uh, even when we ever play out, that will probably be the opening song to get hook everyone in when we go to play, because that song it's it's a rocker. It cooks and uh, if it doesn't get your foot tapped, and then there's something wrong with you. Oh, I met Leo in high school, and oddly enough, you know, other than kind of contributing on some songs here and there, um, I was never in a band with Leo until now, until Refugee Dogs. So I'm I'm really lucky now, you know, I've come full circle, and uh, Leo and I are in a band together. Uh, actually, I've known Bill for about 30 years. Uh, we didn't go to high school uh, together, um, but I met Bill through. Um, another band that a lot of us were in back in the 90s um, a cover band called street hassle bill and i um, started doing our own thing back in the early 90s and we started a band called the second hands um, we put out a cassette called older odd and bill and i have been working together on various projects uh, ever since um, so this is nothing new for us bill and i have been working together for a long time and it's great to be back uh, with bill i met johnny a few years ago through bill um, I forget exactly where, but it was before we started the band, uh, before we started um, Refugee Dogs. So when it came time to put the band together, uh, you know, Bill's first pick was Johnny and it turned out to be a great pick because Johnny's super talented. Uh, Jamie joined the band um, a little bit later. And um, the great thing about working with these guys is that they all bring different musical styles to the band. So, you know, all of us coming together and bringing our own separate styles. Of course, I bring in a lot of the electronic uh, stuff and, and prog uh, rock and a lot of the um, EDM and, you know, synth wave style. Um, so we contribute to each song and kind of flesh it out. Somebody, you know, brings in a song idea and, you know, we just add to it. And just the, you know, some of the ideas that these guys come up with uh, is just is just fantastic. So I love working with them. Um, it's a whole new fresh approach and you'll find that a lot of the songs um, are different from each other. So it's not just blues, it's not just, you know, prog, it's not just, you know, country. It's it's a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I kind of, comp I hate comparisons, but, you know, I, I said, you know, we maybe be, we could be the next jam, big jam band like Fish or Humphreys because, you know, we kind of have that crossover uh, into other styles that those guys do. So we'll see where it goes. Playing a video game where you're at any time at any country that you're fighting another country. So um, I was a German sh a soldier, and at one point it said something that um, sounded like flat footed George. I'm sure that's not what it said, but it's something in German that sounded like that, but that's the way I heard it. Wrote it down and said that would be a good song title. Bill and Jamie teamed up on this song, but I did a lot of arranging, and it shows because the song is awesome. In fact, I'm awesome. Everything I played on that was of my own design, except the opening figure Bill asked me to play. And it's really funny when we're rehearsing and I forget that it's in D and play it in C. That makes for a lot of laughter with it. Fun song. Uh, maybe the craziest song on the album. Bill wrote the basis for it. Uh, and... Um, and then I added a verse. He asked me to put to contribute something, so I pulled a verse together, and and uh, we kind of built this story about this this guy George who was just creating havoc somewhere on a mountainside. I I pictured. Anyway, um, we had a blast arranging this song, um, and in particular the the middle part with the um, with the the vocal the vocal arrangement in that. I I, I really like it. That's one of the standouts of the album. And um, the country vibe is is great. Um, so yeah, fly footed George. Now Bill would say that there's no leader of the band, there's nobody in charge, um, and I think that that's true on the creative front. But when it comes to keeping things moving forward and and uh, 
hurting the herding of dogs <laughs> rather than cats. Um, yeah, Bill's the guy. Uh, there would be no album if it wasn't for Bill and, and what he's done to pilot this ship. And, you know, I think uh, I'm really thankful that he was there and able to pull it all together, uh, pull us all together and make things happen. Uh, Bill tends to write a lot more country rock, blues rock. And Bill's a phenomenal songwriter um, and a gifted musician fantastic keyboard player. He doesn't play keyboards with the Refugee Dogs, but he's a great keyboard player. Um, the sound of his instrument, his rhythm guitar, the sound is phenomenal. Between the gear he owns and the amps he owns, he gets just such a nice, beautiful, clean sound out of his instrument. And uh, I love the way he writes music, the sound of his music, and his vocals are, are fantastic. Bill does a great job, and I'm really, really happy that he asked me, out of all the drummers he knows, to be the drummer on his debut album of the Refugee Dogs. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate it. Looking forward to many, many years ahead of writing and recording more music together, and hopefully getting out and playing some of this stuff. Bill, Bill, Bill. What a solid human being, a great songwriter. He is also the R. Lee Ermey of the Refugee Dogs. And I'm gonna eat a jelly donut and then kill him in a latrine and then eat a bullet myself. But not until we're done recording a few more records, but that's coming down the line. And I don't bear him any grudge for it. Every band should have a bill. Because without a bill, you don't have a band. You have you talk about your band. With Bill, he's just. I keep walking. That's just a really beautiful tune, and uh, it was fun. It was the other tune we got accomplished. Most of the basic tracks at the studio barn in West Orange, and uh, yeah. We threw all kinds of guitars and stuff at that. Um, I did, you know, I don't know if anyone knows about harmonics, but you know, that's a harmonic. But yeah, I like to think I invented those. This is one of Jamie's songs. It's slow. I didn't think it would be this slow, but it kind of works. I added some really cool ornamental stuff to it. And by the way, Jamie rules. So again, this was an opportunity to see where where I could expand and, and maybe swell swell out the arrangement with um, with all the players we have in in in, uh, in the Refugee Dogs and the and again the superior musicianship. So they didn't let me down. I'm very happy with it. Really happy with the production uh, work on it. Uh, I know Leo did a lot uh, on that one. Um, John and and speaking of Leo, his performance is 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 really strong on this one, as is John. So, um, yeah, I keep walking. Um, and Leo is a lot more experimental. He brings a lot more of the prog rock uh, feel that I really like. But when Leo comes back with a part, it's usually something that never would have thought of, and most of the time too, it just makes the song the part a thousand times better because uh, his musicianship musicianship, and just the, the way he processes things and he comes back with something that I would have never thought of and I'm sure that most people probably wouldn't think of as well. And um, it's, it's always for the better. Um, as well as got to know him much better obviously when you're when you're in a band you get to know people a little bit better but he's my uh he's my diner date as well every time before practice we usually get dinner before we go to practice so i spend a lot of time with him and he hasn't beaten me up or uh he still returns my phone calls so i guess he still likes me um but leo is 
a phenomenal musician. If I was sitting in an audience watching Leo play with a friend of mine and I said, you know, Leo graduated with a four-year degree in music from Berkeley and he's teaching music now and he's a professional musician, they wouldn't even question that because Leo's that good. He is adventurous. Whenever I think there's going to be, um, I can picture a solo coming, he'll make it completely different, something I never expected. Um, he writes phenomenal music these days, fantastic lyricist, and I'm really happy to be in a band with the guy. Um, and I'm looking forward to the years ahead, um, writing and recording more music with my, my really, really special friend, Leo McCluskey. Leo is uh, just amazing. He's an amazing guy. Uh, he's got great sense of humor. He kills me. I mean, I can look at him and just start laughing. Not because of the way he looks, although sometimes that's the case. The guy knows how to summon up sweat like nobody's business. Um, but his uh, his virtuosity on the guitar, um, just how how versatile, versatile he is, um, all the different styles that we throw at him, and he never flinches, uh, just amazing. And then his songwriting, um, the ideas he comes up with, and, and they're all out of left field but all in a good way. Um, sometimes I start off scratching my head and then I start, you know, and then I want to pat him on the head. Just, just great, great stuff. Um, one of the best things about joining this band is having that experience. Slightly political and slightly just nonsense. So, uh, when the music came to me and I didn't really have a cohesive set of lyrics, I just threw things together from different songs with some basic underlining theme. But um, it really shouldn't be thought about too much and just listen to and just uh, enjoy Leo's solo. And it definitely does have a liberal slant to it. Um, so... The band is not made up completely of liberals, so we have kind of a mixed bag. We've got we've got some conservatives, some liberals, and some uh, who are smart enough not to <laughs> not to say what they are. At any rate, when Bill asked me if I could add some additional vocals to kind of um, expand it a little bit and, and uh, provide a little bit more of a, a counterpoint, um, I thought let's just use the word no. And, and, and that'll indicate that, hey, you know, this is an opinion. There are other opinions. Politics schmolitics. If a cat ever runs for president, it's got my vote. That's all I have to say on the matter. Learn to be alive. I don't know what the fuck I played on that. I think it's just he has some stop, stock, uh, you know, heavy chord punctuations. And then I, I know Bill kind of wanted a solo that was uh, unhinged, so I tried, and that's that's what's on the record. I guess the question that comes to mind is, is there anything the man can't do? And then personally for me, um, I guess what I can say is life changing. The songs the man writes, how naturally and how easy it comes to him is, um, is sometimes you really just want to hate him. Abe was stuck, he couldn't think of anything and said, why don't you come up with something? And uh, most normal people would say, all right, let me go back and listen to it. But uh, within 10 minutes, Jamie had written perfect lyrics. He's an incredible musician overall and a great person. Again, like I said, I'm uh, happy that he's in the band and that I know him and consider him a friend as well. I grew up in Madison, New Jersey, which is the next town over from where I'm at now in Florham Park. 
Um, and uh, we had several grammar schools in, in Madison. And um, little did I know is that Jamie was actually growing up in Madison around the same time I was. But we didn't go to the same school. But we, we would have gone to the same high school um, had I stayed in Madison. So I probably would have been jamming with uh, Jamie and his crew. But, um, you know, small world. We got together. Uh, Jamie joined the band um, a little bit later. And, um, you know, Jamie turned out to be one of the most prolific songwriters I've ever met. I mean, Jamie cranks out like 10 songs a day or, or 10 songs an hour or whatever. Um, and the cool thing is that they're all catchy as fuck. Yeah, the, uh, the output he produces is it's formidable. And he hits a pocket every now and then where it's just like boom song, boom song, boom song. And they're really fully realized too. I mean, you can record it with us or not with us. I'm glad he chooses to record with us. Um, and he's, this isn't to suggest he's not a team player. He is all over everything, all the material. That this really is a band effort, and the dimension he brings to to this uh, endeavor is. I don't have it. I'm not going to finish that thought. He's also a prolific songwriter. I mean. We were all scratching our heads because every day he'd send us a new song. And I would say, I, he's full of shit. He doesn't write a song every day. These are all old songs he's sending us. But I've come to realize that Jamie can write a song in 20 minutes if you ask him to. Um, he'll put lyrics to anything. And he, he likes to hang out in his attic and do his thing. And I'm really happy that I get to put drums to his music. God bless Leo's masterpiece. Not the first song he brought to us. We still haven't even recorded the first song that he brought to us, but he came to us with this song, with a basic sketch of um, several ideas in it, and the band... Um, Worked hard to come up with an arrangement um, to get us from point A to point B in the song. And then uh, again, talked about how you get the feel of who should have the solo in the song. And all along, it felt like Anthony should have the solo uh, in the song. And then when it came down to track and keyboards, Anthony did an avert inversion of the uh, chord progression. And it kind of changed the whole feel, but it, it sounded cool. And then in the first couple mixes, it was up high, Anthony's keyboards were, were high in the mix and it really changed the feel of the song. But then as we pulled it back a little bit further back into the mix, it was there and it, it then it completely enhanced the song, made it a different song. But um, again, it was something that we would never thought of, it just happened by mistake as Anthony was trying to figure out what to play. And um, one, of, one of my favorite songs on the CD as a whole. I put in one of my finest performances on this one. Listen to it, and you'll know what I'm talking about. I think this is Leo's finest contribution to the album, uh, and, and actually one of the best songs I've ever heard. Um, it, it, the production of it is ethereal. It's a great example of songwriting and a great example of the band's uh, uh, collaborative strength. Um, in particular, I love the bait and switch uh, in the nearing the middle to latter part of the song there's you hear the church bells kind of clinging and and a uh, sort of harpsichord sound and and it feels like the song could just fade away and it could we could have probably just done that but instead it launches into uh into a, a great great solo anthony does a fantastic job on that solo um and at the end of the day this is just a, a really beautiful composition and I'm, I'm proud that i was part of this one and then I came up with uh, what eventually became my guitar riff on the bass. It was just this fun little exercise-y thing to play. And then uh, wanted to make a song out of it and the phrase, God bless the women for keeping us alive, save us from suicide no matter how hard we try, popped into my idiot head one night and I said, hey, that sounds cool.
Johnny! I've been playing with John Deventer in one capacity or another for 20 years. I love that big galoot. What a great drummer. What an inventive, always exploring. He never tires of the discoveries of his craft. And as such, he's always in search of the perfect part. And he really hears this, the form of a song, even if he's still guessing at it because you're just feeding it to him for the first time. He's still kind of intuiting. Okay, all right, I see what this idiot's doing. I can, I can, all right, this is your song. All right, I'll, I got it. But I don't know that this is what I want to play. I might want to play something else on the next take. It's like, no, stop it. What are you doing? So that battle is fun. It's a fun battle. It's a good problem to have. John is... Um He's like the salt of the earth. Uh, he's 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 got his opinions. He knows what he wants. He will work and work and work until he gets his drum parts just right. Um, one of the most uh, generous guys I've ever met in a lot of ways. Um, he's uh, I don't know. In a lot of ways, I think he's kind of he's the heart. He's the heart. He's the heartbeat of the band, and um, and that has a lot more to do than just per, as a percussionist. John's one of a kind, and uh, so glad I've had the chance to meet him and work with him. Rarely do you find a drummer that will put so much thought into how percussion and the drum should play in a song. So, um, so just take an example. You send, you write a song, and you send it out to the band, and Johnny doesn't want to hear and he drums on the song and wants to see the words as well. And his analysis of what he does is he listens to the song, thinks about the parts he's going to play, but also looks at the words to say how are the drums going to either enhance the song based upon what he's listening to and reading, or how should the drums be, subtract, be subtracted out of the song so it's not deterring from the message, from the, the melodies, the rhythms, whatever. I said it before, it's the magic of when all of us start to play together. And uh, Johnny was the first person that was there when we started the Refugee Dogs. That um, it's the first person I thought of that, again, happy said yes, timing was right. And uh, didn't have a plan B if he didn't say yes, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I was happy he said yes and that uh, built the foundation of what was to come. I met Johnny a few years ago through Bill. Um... I forget exactly where, but it was before we started the band, uh, before we started um, Refugee Dogs. Uh, and, you know, surprise, Johnny was drummer with um, Street Hassle. Um, so when it came time to put the band together, uh, you know, Bill's first pick was Johnny and it turned out to be a great pick because Johnny's super talented. Uh, Johnny and I hit it off um, right away. We both uh, really love jazz rock and fusion. Um, we went to, we went to, we kind of bonded over a band called, um, Snarky Puppy. Um, and, you know, we, we share that love for that kind of music. The only thing I can say about Johnny is for some reason, every time we set up his studio in his basement, it gets messed up a few days later. I think, I think maybe it's the ghosts in his house. He just fixed up a new house. So maybe he's still got some ghosts down there. But anyway, they call me in for IT support. And, um, that's kind of my other role in the band <laughs> is, uh, fixing the computers. a smart guy. He knew that he should set me loose soloing on this tune. That's one of the main elements contributing to the magnificence of this recording. My solo work. Lover's Moon. Uh, this is another one of Bill's songs. Um, really well, really well written. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's a great showcase for Leo and Anthony. Bill's vocals are particularly strong on this one, and I had a ba uh, I had a really good time writing the bass line for it, um, doing my best to stay out of the way of what everybody else was doing. Um, but um, there are parts in the song where where John and I uh, really synced up very well, and I, I I think that that just that just helped to to make the song that much more cohesive and and enjoyable. So uh, yeah. 
It's a good song. Really good song. Lover's Moon. Anthony is, he's an enigma. Uh, he's really quiet. He seems to study the room. He knows exactly what's going on around him all the time. Um, but his his approach to the music is is kind of reflective of that thoughtfulness that that you know he's really he's really studying what the song requires and and he'll find it he'll find just the right part to put into every song um prog music i uh, you know i grew up with some guys who were into that and i was like eh, whatever and uh, i kind of like rush um but he's given me a whole new appreciation of of that genre of music and um and uh yeah, he's just been a delightful guy to have in the band. The parts that he plays and what he listens to and how he processes things and what he, um, how he interprets or what he puts down on the song. I mean, if you think uh, the band as a whole is a, is a series of different people with very different musical influences. And Anthony's very uh, prog music uh, focused. That's his... I mean, if you listen to any of the stuff that he writes on his own or that he covers, but it's it's pretty amazing and cool the way it finds its place in some of the, our song. The Stray Dog, uh, he's got a great touch on the keys. He's got a great imagination and he's very precise. Um, he loves his MIDI and he won't allow one note to be out of place when we're done. I appreciate him very much. When it, this dawned on me, I was like, Duh. but I realized um, everyone in the band, he's the one I've known the longest. That I kind of knew, but he's also the one I first played with. Um, mutual friend, Andrew Durkin, Mighty Sunnyvale, industrial jazz group, Evelyn Situation, other things I'm forgetting. Um, we all grew up in Florham Park, went to high school together, and uh, now I'm in a band with Anthony Schmaglia. And But still I feel your 
soft smile, follow me. Jenny Rush is my back. Bill had most most of this song put together um, based on the story that John told us. Um, and uh, it's no coincidence that the song is rooted in the chords A, B, and E. And what does that spell? Arnie. No, it smells. It spells. It smells. It smells Abe. I don't know if Abe smelled, but he, uh, he certainly uh, <laughs> gave our buddy John a little agita. At any rate... Um, Bill asked me to uh, to write some lyrics to a section that he hadn't quite fleshed out yet, and um, at that point I, I decided that it was a good idea that Abe uh, would would land up in in jail, uh, wind up in jail, and uh, so that's when the character Abe went to jail. The real Abe, who knows where he went? Probably didn't go anyplace. Abe. Clean chorus E, I'd probably double them. Um, it's a habit I'm in doubling. Um, I didn't invent it. Uh, some of my favorite producer, engineer, mixers, players, songwriters, all in oneers. When I hear their stuff, and I'm like, man, I'm knocked out. I'm knocked out for a number of reasons. I really put down a top-notch piano line on this one. Sounds like Springsteen or Petty, largely because of my contributions. And that's them on a good day. Check out my organ swirl on the hits before the solos. Whoa, I rule. It's funny, it's it's the last song on the album, and it, and it was probably the first or second song that I ever heard that had anything to do with the refugee dogs. And since that time, we've worked on innumerable tunes. Uh, after we're done with this album, there's we have at least uh, two other projects lined up, um, and uh, one better than the next. <clears throat> At any rate, uh, I think in terms of overall songwriting, this is one of the, one of the, the best songs on the album. It's it's one of Bill's um, when he sent it to me. The bass line wrote itself, and I'm not kidding. I mean, I sat down with it, and and it was I just knew what to play on it. Uh, it really took nothing uh it, it was like i don't know it was kind of strange actually that's never happened to me uh with a song that i've written a bass part for it just all kind of came out um it's uh it's a great example of how john and i can lock in together very well um and i think that that bill's performance on this one is um is exceptional um it's uh you listen to, to him singing it and and it's emotional it's you know it's i think they're it's a very sincere vocal performances sometimes people are just singing words but there's more behind this one and 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 some real frustration and angst and i think that shows up so he did a he did a masterful job on that um yeah heal myself Stays. You scare up games to play. 